If something needs fixing, then lace up your shoes and do some organizing. If you're disappointed by your elected officials, grab a clipboard, get some signatures, and run for office yourself. Show up. Dive in. Stay at it. That was former President Barack Obama at his farewell speech back in 2017, encouraging Americans to act instead of just saying they want change. And that is just what Connecticut State Senator Will Haskell did next year. At just 22 years old, Haskell did what some thought was impossible. He beat an incumbent state senator who held that seat for decades. In his first book out today, entitled 100,000 First Bosses, My Unlikely Path as a 22-Year-Old Lawmaker, he tells the story of how he won. And the youngest member of the Connecticut General Assembly joins us now. So I'm a big, I was a Connecticut reporter um, long before you were born. And uh, so tell me, <laughs> tell me where you, uh, who you represent and who did you beat? Well, thank you so much for having me, Mika. I represent the 26th district, seven towns in Fairfield County. Um, and oh, by the way, there's still many fond memories from folks in the Hartford News area of your time as a uh, as a local anchor there. Oh, so you've been visiting the um, the nursing homes in the area, talking to people <laughs> closer to my age. That's nice of you and good politics. I appreciate it. Yes, I worked with Dennis House, who's now on WTNH Channel 8, but he was at WFSB Channel 3. And we co-anchored Channel 3 Eyewitness News Daybreak with Joe Fury in the morning. Yes, that was my first life on TV. Uh, little little information I'm sharing here with our viewers. So that's an incredible um, area and group of people to represent. Tell us about your 100,000 bosses and how you won them over. Sure. Well, uh, I, shortly after college, I decided to do something a little bit unusual, and that was to come back to my hometown and to start knocking on doors. And the reason I made that decision was largely because of President Obama's farewell address, which you just played. He said that if you were disappointed in your elected officials, you should grab a clipboard, get some signatures, and run for office. I was really disappointed, not just in the state of our politics in general, but disappointed in the incumbent state senator, somebody who had been in office for longer than I'd been alive, had voted against paid family and medical leave, believed that we went too far in regulating guns when I thought we hadn't gone far enough. So I decided to hire my college roommate to be my campaign manager. And the morning after graduation, we came back to Fairfield County and started knocking on doors. And it's been a wonderful journey. I wrote this book to encourage other young people to take that leap of faith and to run for office themselves, because I think that we really need generation Gen Z's perspective as we craft public mm -hmm. policy, whether it's in town halls or at state capitals or in Washington, D.C. Damn right. Uh, Will, here's some of what you write in your book. Quote, when I entered politics, I learned that the government is filled with people who are similarly ordinary. We need ordinary people, tons of them, to solve the extraordinary problems we face. While too many Americans loathe politicians, there are also too many who de deify them, and both extremes fail to capture the reality. Aaron Sorkin instilled in me the belief that the president of the United States should receive a perfect score on the SAT, then juggle multiple games of chess while sorting through an international crisis. Perhaps our politics would be more functional if we had a realistic expectation and understanding of who Brent represented us in government, maybe more smart and competent people will decide to run for office if they realize they don't need to be otherworldly brilliant. After all, the last few years have taught me that hard work pays off more than anything else in this job. Uh, I don't disagree with that at all. And, and some of the more interesting and challenging forces that we have seen at the top level in politics lately are from Yale and Harvard. And it's all very confusing. But, well, let me ask you this. Um, 
there is some concern that in your age group, there is a lot of talk about wokeness and those issues while sort of the house is burning down. January 6th, our democracy at risk. What are your views in terms of how we shore up this democracy and stick to our values? And do you think that matters among people in your age group? Well, it matters tremendously. Um, look, there's a lot of hand-wringing in the Democratic Party as to whether or not the path to victory lies through persuading moderate voters in suburbs like the ones that I represent or mobilizing Democratic activists. And frankly, I don't pretend to know the answer, but I do know that any path to victory is going to be paved by young voters. We showed up in a big way in the 2018 midterms. And then that became the new norm in 2020. Young voters showed up in Michigan and Pennsylvania and Arizona and Georgia with such a strong margin for the Democrats that they helped to deliver Joe Biden the White House. But the challenge now for the Democratic Party is how to harness the potential of this critical part of their coalition. Luckily for the left, we are, are still growing, uh, literally in some cases. But it's time for elected officials to spend more time talking to young people as opposed to just talking about them. It's going to be a challenge for a party led by, frankly, septuagenarians and their more senior colleagues to figure out how to talk about issues in a way that resonates with the next generation. I think that that starts, and I lay out in this book, how we can take down some of the barriers that prevent young people from voting and how we can take down some of the barriers that prevent young people from actually making that leap of faith, getting their name on the ballot and running for office. Good morning, Will. It's Willie Geis. Good to see you this morning. The title of your book, 100,000 First Bosses, refers to your constituents, all of whom you answer to as a state senator. So how did you, going door to door at 22 years old, as you describe in the book, because I think a lot of people who think, OK, I just got out of college. I don't have the experience. I don't have the breadth of understanding of the issues to do that. And you said, I don't know. Let me give this a shot. How did you begin at 22 years old to earn the respect of those 100,000 bosses, those people who came out to vote for you? How did you show them that you were ready for that job? Well, it was certainly a challenge, Willie. Um, the truth of the matter is that uh, young voters don't have all the perspective and don't have all the experience that some of our older colleagues do. I don't know what it's like to uh, take out a mortgage or to uh, deal with the declining health of parents who are aging. So when my colleagues in the legislature talk about those issues, I spend a lot more time listening than talking. But conversely, Generation Gen Z brings a, a different perspective. We know what it's like to hear a loud noise in the hallway and worry about where we would hide in the event uh, that the next Parkland, that the next Sandy Hook, that the next Columbine arrived in our high school. We know that climate change isn't a academic anxiety we learn about in school, but actually is an existential threat to our ability to lead happy and healthy lives. We know how hard it is to afford a college degree in the 21st century. So the promise of representative democracy is that every generation has a voice, every perspective has a voice. It's why we need to elect more women, it's why we need to elect more people of color, and it's why I believe also we need to elect more stakeholders in Connecticut's future. Every single day in town halls, in state capitals, in Congress, policymakers make decisions about what the next 100 years of American life will look like and they do so uh, without input from the next generation that is very much invested in that future. All right. The new book is 100,000 First Bosses. My unlikely path as a 22-year-old lawmaker, Connecticut State Senator Will Haskell will say hi to my friends at WTNH, WFSB, WVIT. I was there when you were not. <laughs> but you, you were born after. <laughs> Thank you Thank very you so much. much <laughs> Take care. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.